Hey guys, what's up? It has been a long, long time. Today, I'm gonna bring you a cookie cutter template for your Python projects. If you don't know what a cookie cutter is, don't worry. It's basically, uh, it's gonna be like a program that will basically set up all your entire project with all the good practices and whatnot. So I created this custom uh, template to help you guys, more like beginner focused uh, template. Uh, I based myself on a template I found online, but I removed a lot of the things that I thought were a bit too advanced and also unnecessary for someone who's just like learning. Also, the repository can be a little bit scary because you'll have a lot of new files that probably you're not very aware of what they are, what they mean, but trust me, the best way of actually learning about these files is just having them on your repository because then you'll interact with them and then you know by trial and error you'll figure out like what is everything what's the point of having this file what is it doing here so uh without further ado i'm gonna just do a small showcase of the template i will show you how to install it and how to use it and uh, i hope it's super useful for you because i wish uh, uh, I had this when I first started learning how to program and uh, yeah, uh, enjoy! Alright guys, let's uh, get our template running, let's get uh, our project started. So we need cookie cutter, first install it if you don't have it, I already have it. So all I need to do is call the cookie cutter on the repo of the template I want to use, which in this case is my own template, which I will share with you. So this is just asking if I want to refresh. All good, my full name, email, GitHub name, project name, let's go my package. You know, it gets like a, a slug, which would be like pp salt my underscore package, probably the name, uh, some description, a version, author file, and then uh, the license. Under MIT. Okay, so uh, let's go, and uh, I wanna. I will, I'm gonna develop in dev, in, a, in a container, a Docker container. I highly recommend uh, developing here. Otherwise, you can also look here. You can also develop uh, locally. I always prefer Docker container. So um, the way we do this is we open the, the now the newly created project. Okay. Uh, my package. Here we go. All right, here we are. So uh, now that we are here, what I need to do is summon the palette and then basically uh, what's gonna happen is this dev container here, this file here, is gonna get this Docker file here that I have here, which is also provided. And then the context, which is like two above, so like the, the project. And we will build a project from there, and uh, it's very easy. Uh, even look here, it's even like suggesting to do it. But let's do it like this. Install should be, and uh, let's reopen in a container. So it will take a little bit for the image to build. I'll uh, come back once it's done. Okay, so now we are ready here. You can see we are inside the container. And the cool thing about this is like, we have all the dependencies that we need for, the, for our project. I was actually trying to set up these locally and I managed to make it work, but then it started like having bugs because of, uh, well, because of the system that I'm using. And this way I can always replicate the same system. It's so much easier. I, like, I cannot recommend this more than anything else. Maybe. Moving on, so what we need to do, we need to create a repository, right? We have here our repository. We have a bunch of new files, those are all new. Okay, let's first install our pre-commit. Our pre-commit uh, is here. It's basically a bunch of books. It, like it will remove um, trailing white spaces. And here, like on our local, what I do is I run uh, make lint, make format, and make test unix. I can show you very quickly. So make format runs isort black and doc formatter. Make um, lint will run flake eight and pylint. And finally, make uh, make oh, make uh, test unit. We'll run all our unit tests. 
and this is amazing. So what I can do now is I can add all these files and do a git commit. First commit and this will run all our pre-commit hooks. First gonna initialize everything. It can take a few minutes, so I'll see you guys in a second. Oh, whoops. So uh, it already started. Uh, luckily I'm, I'm here paying attention. So first check for YAML, uh, let's get to the hooks. You know, it checks for YAML and a file, fill in white space. So now it's actually running uh, our linter. So make lint, so it's gonna run. It's gonna run uh, flake eight and then pylin. Okay, and this is awesome. This is like a, a way of view of like a, another safety net. So that every time you push or commit any code, like it's always good, clean, and uh, formatted code. So this is the main. I also install like I also have a bunch of other things. So like, if you want, um, okay. So here we go. We're good. Just want to talk a little bit about like the the different makes that we have. Uh, one that I want to mention: we have Jupyter. If you want to like uh, spin up a, a Jupyter notebook, this one is quite cool, quite handy if you're a data scientist. Uh, one that I want to show is make this. So this will create a distribution file. And basically what happens is you can either upload this to uh, PyPy or like, for example, Databricks use wheel. So you can upload the wheel and uh, it's a way of like, basically like distributing your code. So you can make a distribution. In my opinion, it's pretty cool. Here you have your wheel. You can share it and people can install it. Uh, another one that's also pretty cool, I like, it's the make docs. So make all the documentation for you. Okay, and uh, here you're gonna, you can find all the package information, so the documentation. You can here have uh, installation, how to do it, and um, yeah, you also have the, your documentation here. So this gets what's on the doc stream. I also have a demo doc test. And uh, this is pretty cool, and this is like basically for free. You don't need to do anything. It's all done for you. All you need to do is make docs, and uh, your documentation is up. Then if you want, you can host your documentation somewhere, but I guess that's more up to you. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to show you. I'm, I hope I'm not forgetting anything. Uh, I can just talk a little bit about the folders. Build is where we have, uh, well, this is where we got the build. Uh, CICD is uh, build.sh and deploy.sh are just like some scripts that I have. They're, they're like empty, but it would be in order like for you to build your production environment and then to deploy your production environment. So everything CI/CD related, I tend to put it in a file called CI/CD. For Docker images, I store them in a folder named Docker. And this is the documentation. So actually the bill here contains the HTML necessary to see that page. So if you want to deploy the page somewhere, and we have tests, we have end-to-end, -end, integration and unit, and also comp test if you want to do some fixtures. The pre-commit, the file int, make file, and the setup file to create the package. And uh, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any other questions, please throw them and I will try to answer them. And that's it, man. Uh, see you. Guys, and like always, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next one. Uh, my life now is a little bit more stable, so I'm planning on releasing more content more regularly. Uh, so yeah, I'm very excited. I hope you guys are excited and see you on the next video.